So, you want to be a buy and hold investor. Really? Well, you're going to have to break through the EQ and IQ investment hurdles, right? Because the reason individuals lose money in the market and are held hostage to these subpar returns that the pros give them is because of low emotional and intelligent quotients, right? It's, it's when it comes down to, to owning the stocks and the funds in their portfolio. And here's the deal. Knowledge is power. The ultimate cure for poor EQ and IQ is A, don't panic, please. You can't panic. B, look under the hood. C, make sure you hire financial advisors that, advisors rather, that know how to look under the hood. Remember, many of those guys don't. They're just managing your money and they give it to someone else. Now, when I say look under the hood, I mean that you have to have an understanding of what's powering the company now and what will power it in the future. I'll give you an example. When the New England Patriots were losing, a lot of people still thought they would win the Super Bowl. Why? Because they understood the components of the team and its history. Now, here's the irony. When you actually invest in the company, not the day-to-day -day movement of the stock, you will beat the professionals. I'll give you a quick case study of buying holding an individual stock. In the past year, shares of Adobe, we all know it, up 38%. Now, along the way, there have been a whole bunch of dips of 5%. It's been commonplace, right? And usually when it goes down, it's on greater than average volume. That downside volume represents the mass selling of individual uh, investors. And what are they doing? They're reacting to other individual react, uh, investors, selling to get selling. Uh, and you know what? There were even two periods uh, where their stock had major panic. On June 21st of last year, it was 100 bucks. By June 27th, $91. That's almost a 10% pullback. A lot of people dumped the stock then. October 24th, same kind of thing. 110 bucks went all the way down to $99 by December 1st. Were you one of the people that sold it? Did you take a loss? Well, if you want to beat the street, you've got to beat them by not falling prey, at least to your own mistakes. Here's the thing. I asked people to buy Adobe earlier this year at $106, and I'm really thrilled because now Wall Street loves the stock at all-time highs. This week, Guggenheim put a buy on the stock, and yesterday, Stiefel followed up with an upgrade on the stock. Target 150, that's going to be a huge gain if it happens. Now, I'm going to tell you, you're never going to achieve great results by just selling blindly. And while you must also avoid the egotistical mistake of holding stocks in broken companies forever, pride and ego kills you every time. Remember, earnings releases, they, they ratchet up next week, okay? I'm going to shift gears a little bit because I, I, I've, I've um, sort of preached to you enough. Next week, it's all about earnings, so brace yourself. But also consider buying the dips, and at the very least, you've got to stop falling prey to these pullbacks and these corrections. Hold the great stocks. In fact, look to buy them on weakness.